Hello and welcome to all the men and women of the West. I'm Joe here from East Macaulay, Dan. Hello and greetings. We just wanted to speed through the intro real quick, as always, so that we can rush to the topic. Lorana, fairest of the elves of Qualinesti, and also the most spoilt of Solosteran's children. What can we say? She's an interesting character. We've had people complain about our view of her in the past and who honestly cares she's such a sheltered child yeah yeah but in some ways that's the appeal of the character she's interesting because she is sheltered the trouble is that when she's no longer sheltered you see that she's not terribly bright i mean trusting kitsiara your enemy and taking her at her word not the smartest move but that's spring dawning in autumn twilight She's a love-stricken, um, love-sick child. That's what she's described as, love-sick. And she very much is for Tannis. Tannis just finds this almost stalker obsession disturbing and tells her, no, honey. Now, he was engaged to her, but says, okay, I'm breaking the engagement. I need to find myself. You need to find yourself. Which, this sort of thing... It is healthy because people need to be individuals as well as part of a unit. You need to be completely willing to compromise everything for your loving partner. In, and you need to be willing to commit everything you've got to them when you're a couple. That's how relate you can make a relationship work. Now, I know people will say, well, that means I have to give up a lot of myself for it. Yes, relationships are sacrifice. Whether it's your relationship with your dog... And I don't mean that in a certain way. I mean that platonically. Like, come on. Um, whether that means with your family, whether that means with your children or your partner, relationships are sacrifice. And even ambition is sacrifice. Everything is about sacrifice in life. You're sacrificing as you go along. But that doesn't mean that you need to give up or you need to quit. No, you're not supposed to. You're supposed to throw everything you've got and more into everything in life. But that's how your relationships and your ambitions become worth it. And that's how you succeed in life with them. Lorana, her love, though, is that of a child. She's not willing to really sacrifice, but she expects Tannis to sacrifice. No, it takes two to tango, honey. That being said... She's a gracious hostess up until Tannis breaks her heart. And here's the thing. As the story progresses, though, even in Autumn and Twilight, you could see her getting braver. Because Lorana, deep down, let's face it, is a crazy brave girl. Like, let's give her some credit and some kudos and even a round of applause. She is insanely courageous. And... When it comes time to following the team, she does a great job actually prowling around them because she's a trained huntress. She's really good at the hunt, let's be honest. And even Sturm and Raceland and Gilthana struggled to realize that someone was following them. That's how skilled Lorana is. So she does have some mad skills. But here's the thing she's not really a Mary Sue, let's be honest. She's not. Her skills actually make sense. And her ability to ha to keep up and to have such courage. I mean, in the tunnels, she ends up never retreating or fleeing. Even when a banshee is basically shrieking at the team, she doesn't run away. All she thinks is that she wishes Tannis was closer so he could hold her and comfort her. But here's the thing, that's a very human response. I'm not going to begrudge her that. She's in love and she's wishing, oh boy, I wish my husband would shield me from this monster because when he holds me, it makes me feel better. Okay, fair enough. You've got some care, like in real life, there are men who wish for their dad to hold them and make the scary stuff go away. There are women who wish for their husband or their mom or their dad to do that for them. We all, on some level, wish for protection. But the thing is, 
we need the in order to be truly courageous we need to throw away that desire and overcome it and actually stare down the darkness and just race past it and into it and come into the light that lies right past that darkness that's true courage that's how great wonders are accomplished and Lorana oh boy does she accomplish that even in Dragons of Autumn Twilight like oh boy does she accomplish that she plunges past it alongside the rest of the team emerges into the tunnels past it and then when the time comes to help the ladies she's helping them and she does not retreat she's assigned the to help you know the fugitives which she does with flying color and she also stands up to some of the companions who are saying you know let's get rid of Gilthanas she's vouching for her brother she's telling taking Tanis to task for even Tanis is not favoring the human side but she takes him to task for kind of being wishy-washy when he resists them which is her job as kind of his girlfriend she needs to tell him like stiffen your backbone honey my brother is innocent you know it take his side and Tannis does he needs Lorana to tell him come on man like be a man she pull she tries to pull her weight yeah and these are great scenes I really like the Lorana and Tannis scenes in Dragons of Autumn Twilight they push each other but they need that they need that tough love from one another. And the thing is that Tannis knows Gilthanus is innocent. Even Sturm on some level knows it. Even though he's kind of taking the to- the, si- the opposite side against, you know, uh, against Gilthanus. But here's the beauty of it. They don't give up and, on each other deep down and that's part of the beauty of the romance between Tannis and Lorana and on Lorana's side it's nice seeing her take her brother's side like the bond between the two in Dragons of Autumn Twilight is one of the most beautiful parts of their characters now I have some complaints about how the relationship develops in Winter Night but that's a separate issue and that's something I want to talk about when we get to the Lorana and Winter Night video but as it stands in in Dragons of Autumn Twilight, arguably this is the best writing Lorena will ever have to a large extent. And maybe later in Winter Night, she, there's also some of the best writing for her there. And the reason I argue this is that it's the truth. Like, Lorena's really well written in Autumn Twilight, at the beginning of Winter Night, she's just such a drag. She's not well written. Well, okay. She's well written as a jerk and as a moron. But then later in, uh, in Winter Night, she's very well written. The thing is, Lorana is not well written when she's around Kitsiara and Ellie Stan, weirdly enough. If they, if Waze and Hickman had truly ended up. Okay, for one thing. I don't know what they were thinking with the Yalistan stuff, but with Kitiara, Tracy Hickman should have listened to Margaret Wace. It was like, no, this part of the plot doesn't work. Wace was right, and that's the reality. But does that take away from Spring Dawning? Not entirely. Spring Dawning's still a great novel, and people should honestly read it. it it's such a great novel, uh, both on its own and as part of a trilogy. Like, that's the thing. While we complain about certain aspects of the Chronicles, let's be honest, they are great novels. And they're a staple of fantasy fiction for a reason. That being said, Lorana is a character who goes from maiden to heroine. And she is a good heroine. And you can kind of see part of that journey just in Dragons of Autumn Twilight as she goes from child to teenager, in a way. And it's a really great journey. I don't have a single complaint about her journey in, in Dragons of Autumn Twilight in hindsight. Like, I can't think of something that about anything that could have been done better than what it already was. The sad thing is there's not as much to talk about because, or complain about because, well... 
He did it perfectly. She's introduced really well. You get a good first impression of her. She then goes and chases after the heroes because she actually wants to go contrib she wants she's afraid for her brother. She's afraid that he's being sent off to his death, so she sees it as I have to follow. I don't want to say goodbye to my brother. I am my brother's keeper in a way. And she also does not want to say goodbye and watch Tannis run up, rush off to his death. Or at least she sees it as if the two most important men in my life are going to perish, I will perish with them. This there's nothing more beautiful or more moving than this kind of love. So that the delusional love sickness that she has in that chapter where Tannis rejects her is gone the next minute, like that, and replaced with a far more mature love, or at least a semi-adolescent one that grows into true love. Or at least that's what it's supposed to do. And it shows us the best possible self-sacrificing character you can imagine right there. Now, the companions were all various shades of gray or, like, they're very complex characters. Lorana's introduced as a very simple character, but in a positive way. She's just simply good. She's simply beautiful in every way, and especially in the heart. So, the reason I think I complain, at least, about her behavior in Winter Night at the beginning is just that it is so childish and needless. Whereas her in Autumn Twilight, she truly stands shoulders and above and head and shoulders above the rest of the heroes in some ways because a lot of the heroes are either selfish or well varying degrees of selfishness but they're still interesting characters they're great characters only really gold moon is completely selfless and lorana is even more selfless than gold moon so that you've got lorana who's truly coming off almost in a clark kent way in marked contrast to the other heroes and elevating them. And I really like that side of her character. And it's really interesting that it's Gold Moon and Lorana who are the most noble and self sacrificing and selfless of the team. And it makes sense. Them and Tass, the spirit of childhood, and the two ladies. And I say ladies because one is essentially a. They're both princesses, but they represent archetypes. And this is very important for their characters, and I really do like it. So I think it helps to get people invested into the novel. And it gives the male characters, and even Tika, who is obviously a female character, something to aspire to. Anything else you want to add? No, we covered everything. Yeah. yeah. Like I said, we're actually deep down fanboys of Lorana. She is a great character. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash that like and that subscribe button as though you were Theros smashing the Dragonlances into shape.